Well, it's working. You can see they're taking a new orientation flight. Just enough uh, disturbance in the front of the hive in a new location. And you can see them flying around the hive, kind of circling, getting a good orientation flight. Woohoo! It worked. That's pretty cool. Hey guys, David Burns. Thanks for joining me today for this video. Um, kind of want to get into my split that I made the other day to see if the queen is in here. Going to be easier to check this hive to see if the queen is sitting in here because there's only four frames. I parked this uh, golf cart here to help these bees make a new orientation flight. So I'm pretty confident that they've done that. I think it's pretty good. I see a lot of bees coming and going. A lot of times when you make a split on the same property like I did, you may get bees that will just leave this hive in a new location and just fly back to their old hive. But in this case, I think we're sitting pretty good. We'll find out when we open it. So let's break it open and see if the queen is there. Gonna have to take off my sunglasses and put on my readers so that we can look carefully for queens. Don't have to wear a nice bee suit today because like I said, it's a smaller colony. Just need a little bit of protection for my face while we look at this hive. So let's get into it today. How? Well, leave a comment below before we get going. Do you think the queen is in here or do you think she's back in the original hive? Everybody leave a comment before I find out. Let me know your guess. <laughs> Where is she? Before we take the top off and see if the queen is in there or if they're raising a queen, let me encourage you to please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. I'm really quite pleased with the number of foragers that I see uh, foraging around here. That's really good. Sometimes you make a split like this, so easy to lose your foragers. Look at that, still feeding them the winter be kind. Be interesting to see what they're eating. Today, it's warmed up a lot. It got up to about 65 degrees Fahrenheit today. So it looks like they're out foraging just a little bit. We still have some cool nights, so I'm glad the winter be kind is on here. Some of you ask me, what in the world is the winter be kind? It's a feeding board that I created, invented a while back, many years ago. And it's one that it's got certain kind of, oh, I guess you would call them minerals, vitamins and it has the sugar and the proteins that bees need. And again, this split is already kind of focusing on eating right up the middle of this. So let's see what it looks like inside the hive. All right, looks good. Will the queen be in here? Will she not? So we'll have to make that decision on. If we don't see the queen, then we'll have to make sure we get uh, some eyes on if they're raising a new queen. Let's pull off, pull out the frame closest to the wall. As you know, that's what I enjoy doing the most because there's the least amount of bees over here that you can uh, upset. Let's just set that frame out and away, get a little more smoke on us. Those of you that are interested in working bees barehanded, uh, today you'll get to see me do that. And so it might help you gain courage to do that. I'm, I'm doing it today because, you know, it's a nice day outside, bees are flying, having fun, and it's a small colony. <laughs> so now with one frame out, you see I can slide this one back out of my way, and that way I don't have to worry about rolling bees. Rolling bees mean that you, you move the uh, colony, or you move a frame, and when you move that frame, if it's too tight, you can actually kill or injure bees by squishing them on the frame when you roll them. There are bees on the next frame we're going to pull out. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. This frame right here. Work in slow motion. Be very gentle when you're working bees barehanded. Try not to move them too fast. Okay, so here we are. A lot of you will leave comments that you'll say, Oh, I saw the queen and... I think I saw the queen at eight minutes and 20 seconds. And when I go back and look, I'm like, that's a drone. So we'll see what we can find. I don't see any eggs. I'm holding it for me to see and don't see any eggs. So it's not a good sign that the queen is in here since I don't see any eggs. So if she's not, they could be raising a queen, which means we're gonna have to be more careful 
um, about knocking down a queen cell. We don't see the queen on this frame at all. And again, some bees are piled up kind of thick, so it, you know she could be underneath right here, but I don't think so. The wind's, wind's blowing my smoke away. All right, got them smoked. Let's go ahead and look at this next frame here. Hope we'd see eggs or queen cell. This will be kind of cool to see if they've started a queen cell yet. They did have eggs when I put them in here, so they could be raising a queen if they don't have one. This is some of the brood that we may have dropped in here when we transferred it over. Look at that, capped over brood. So let's look carefully for a queen. And I'm not seeing any eggs either on this frame around the outside area of the brood. There's no eggs down in these cells where you could possibly may see some eggs. I'm not seeing any eggs. Uh, there's a, lar a bee larvae that probably got knocked down when we lifted the frame out. There's a lot of bees coming in with pollen on their back legs, which means there's, they're foraging. You know, they found a way to get back to their same hive. You see the foragers right here with yellow pollen on their back legs. That's a good sign to see. Okay, so we're looking for queen cells or a queen or eggs. I do see older larvae, but it's older than when I put this in here. Cat brood in the middle there. A small hive beetle. No queen present. There's a queen cup at the very top here, if you can see it, right here, but there's nothing in it. So they either need to have a queen or they need to be raising a queen. Make sure there's nothing here. A pile of bees right there. Nope. Definitely no eggs. So what do we got? A couple more frames to look at, maybe one. I'm glad I'm showing you guys this now because if they don't have a queen and they don't have a queen cup or a queen cell in development, the eggs now are too old for them to raise a queen. So we're gonna have to intervene and help them out. So let's just take a look at this last frame and see what's on here. So this is the frame we have to see the queen or the start of a new queen, right? Or else they can't survive much longer uh, you know, as far as they go without a queen. Now this is a super frame I dropped in here. All right. So let's just take eyes across, see if we see a queen walking around. There's some good cat brood. I don't see a queen jumped out at me. Let's just carefully look at all the bees, make sure. Look at that, I don't see any queen cups or cells either. I don't see that they're in the process of making a queen. I really don't. You would think they would. You'd think that all bees would, you know, find themselves in a queenless state, start raising a uh, queen, but I'm not seeing that. It could be hidden, hidden underneath some stuff. What's going on here? Aha, a queen cup. Oh, a queen cup, let's see. Yeah, queen cup with the larvae right here. Where did it go? See that bee right here? This, this bee is feeding this queen cup. So in this queen cup is a larvae. I don't know if my camera's picking it up, but the bees are going in here and they're feeding this queen cup. The bees are going on in and here and they're raising a queen in this queen cup. As you can see here, the bees are going in here and they're raising a queen in this queen cup. They're feeding her now. So they are raising a queen. Uh, probably raising another one there. Let's see. 
can't tell if there's any larvae in that one. Uh -huh. So it's good that we moved some beads around and we spotted this queen cup that's really cool right there. Okay, so this is good for you guys to see the process that we're going through. This, we did not carry the queen over, which it would have been better for us to have moved that old queen out, keep them from swarming in that other hive. But the swarm, the other hive isn't too crowded. But there, there's that perfect queen cup. Let's get that back in here. We're done inspecting, close it up. They seem to like the candy board. That's funny how they're building wax on it too, isn't it? But we'll leave that in here a little bit longer for them. We still got some cool nights so that it help them out. But they are foraging, so we're glad to see that. Okay, so what this is gonna allow us to do is to have a split that we made and they're raising their own queen here. And so we're just gonna let this continue on this way. Now, I would say that the queen here, the larvae looks to be um, about six days old, seven days maybe. Uh, they're gonna cap it over in a couple of days, eight more days, she'll emerge. And then it's gonna take a week for her to go out and mate, come back and maybe another week to start laying, who knows. We got a little time before we can start checking up on this queen. But it's the only queen cup right now that they have with the larvae in it, just one. So that means this queen, it's all or nothing, right? So in other words, if she goes out on a mating flight and something bad happens to her, like she gets eaten by a bird or hit by a school bus windshield, then this hive is screwed. So we're going to have to keep tabs on this hive pretty strongly. But the cool thing about all this, guys, is that this hive is going to be a good hive for us this year. It's a split that we made from an overwinter colony uh, long before we needed to, but it's going to, which now this gives me the opportunity in the hive that I took this out of is to make another split by taking the queen with four frames and move it into another deep like this. And that will allow the hive back home not to swarm the mother hive because I've taken their queen. The good news is they weren't in a swarm state yet. They weren't heavily populated. They weren't uh, heavily jam-packed full of resources or brood yet, so I can wait longer. So this is just a good example of how I'm going to turn that hive into three hives. This is one, going to split it again when they get fuller, probably in about another three or four weeks, I'll split it with the mother queen into another box, bring it down here. Then I'll let that hive raise their own. Or if I'm raising queens by then, might be, I'll drop a new queen in there. But right now this was, this is really working out good. So you can see the process that I went through. I knew that I made this split. I knew that they did or they may or may not have a queen. It didn't matter as long as I had eggs in both of the hives, the mother hive and this one. So this one didn't have the queen. And so what they did, they started raising one from one of the eggs that got mature one day old larvae. They started raising a queen here, but I wanted to make sure they were doing it. It's possible that we could have looked and saw nothing and like I said, they'd be screwed because there's not an egg in there anymore. Everything's too old to raise a queen in there since we made the split. In that case, we would either have to put all these back in the mother hive and make a split later, or we would have to find a way to move another frame of eggs over, see if they would raise a queen this time. So that's the thinking behind what we do when we make these splits. Again, putting the golf cart here was huge. We need to move it today. I need it for other places but I can tell these bees know where their home is. They're, they're really all there. We saw good foragers with pollen in their baskets, yellow pollen, probably dandelion or something. So they're doing good. Now, if you missed the video of me making this split, here it is. I want you to watch it. If you missed it, I'll see you over there.